Guys, quick video here. Since I can't do cleanups, we just keep getting snow. And uh, not enough to plow, unfortunately, but enough to cover the yards. And uh, yeah, so it means other things in the shop. So let me show you real quick what I'm doing, then I'll get into what this video is about. So I did throw the bigger tweels on the V-Ride 2. The smaller tweels are still in the V-Ride 1. But the tires I put on the Windstorm are the stock thinner tires, taller, thinner tires that came stock on the V-Ride 2. Uh, the reason being is the stock tires that came on the windstorm are these wide ones right here, which got horrible traction. So I did put the bigger tweels on there, and it definitely did better, but still not good enough. So I'm going to try those. Those will be the last thing I try if this snow melts off and I can get back out there. But I definitely wanted the uh, bigger tweels on the V-Ride 2, and that's how they'll be for spring. So let's get into... The video. VXF 8.5 foot blade. You guys know I bought this blade last year. Um, I love it. It's been flawless. I watched a ton of videos and endless problems guys have had with this blade. Um, the last generation before they come out with this gen. Um, I haven't had any of those issues. The only issue I did have is that light up there. Um, I only use this, I think I bought this right around the beginning of January last year. So I used it for the second half of the plowing season. Um, the plow itself did phenomenal, but this light right up here kept giving me issues. It kept, sometimes it would work, sometimes it wouldn't. I'd pull the face off of it, and uh, I'd pull the face off of it, didn't see anything wrong, put it back on, the light would come back on. It would work fine, then I'd be out plowing, and it would stop working. Um, I did put the LED bulbs in there, and I the only issue I had with that, people said I would have an issue with it not heating up the lenses enough, and they would ice over. This is Western New York. We don't really have that issue with them icing over. Um, so that definitely was not a problem at all. But they were too bright and I couldn't get them to where they would aim right, where I wasn't blinding people all the time. They just become a pain in the ass. Not to mention the way those bulbs were designed, I'd be driving in a snowstorm and it would completely blind me. I couldn't see anything, it was horrible. Um, so I put the halogens back the halogen bulbs back in there, and uh, I still had problems. I didn't have the problems when I had the LED bulbs in there, come to think of it. I don't think I ever had an issue with that going out. So it may just be a bulb issue. Other than that, I think the lights are probably fine. They could be used, um, but I've been wanting to upgrade to these here. So I went to the dealer today, and I got them. These are the upgraded LED kit. It is the Snow Dog Illuminator LED Snowplow Lights. In this box, for those of you that don't know, this is what the stock lights look like. So there's just the two bolts to hold it in, and then this plug in the new ones, um, you just it has the plug right there, and you just pull the harness from the plow up a little higher and plug it in and re-zip tie the harness. I'll show you that in a minute. But these are the stock lights. Um, in my opinion, I've had I've run everything from Myers to Western to Boss, um, Boss being my favorite, but I've run everything, and uh, those halogen stock bulbs are the best as far as driving in a snowstorm. They work really well. Um, but I like I said, I just have the stock. This plow is uh, two years old, and. That's just the stock halogen bulbs in there. These lights are really, really good as well. So anyway, I wanted to upgrade, so I did. Um, and like I said, these just, they bolt on there the same way. Um, two bolts, there's the plug I was talking about on the bottom, and you just pull the harness. If I can show you guys, you just pull the harness here up more. It comes out right there, you just pull it through. There's a bunch of slack inside there, both sides. Um, so what I'll do is I will turn these on and I will show you what they look like. I don't know how well it'll show up on video um, as far as them being LEDs, how bright they'll look, but I'll show you. And then I'll show you what I did with a strobe. Um, you know what? I'm going to turn the lights off in the shop here and then I will, uh, and then I'll come back. Okay, the lights are off in the shop. Start the truck up here. You can see on the back wall they're pretty bright. Um, I think I have to come down with them a little more, 
I know it looks real bright up there, but the main beam, you can see it. It's real defined when it hits the wall, and uh, it's actually right down about here. Um, but I'll definitely uh, readjust as need be. But it seems like this one here is brighter than that one there. So maybe that issue I was having before is a harness issue. Um, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Looking at them straight on like I'm looking at them right now, they are definitely just as bright as each other. Um, but in the camera, that one definitely looks brighter. I don't know why that is. So there's the lights, like I said. And we will see what happens, uh, how much I have to adjust them or whatever. I'll show you this real quick too. Like all my other trucks, I always had light bars up here or I had strobes that went down the sides on the back racks there um, and a strobe up top. I had another one where I had strobes back here up top and, uh, and then on that truck I also had strobes in the rear bumper. I didn't want to do any of that to this truck. I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do. Um, I put a light bar in that window. I've been having an issue. Um, it kept falling down. I just did it a couple hours ago and it fell down like three times but I realized uh, three of the six suction cups, a couple on each side, um, were folded over so I swapped them out with other ones that came in the kit. Um, it has seven or eight different patterns but I'll show you the one that's, this is the one that I like the most. So I left it on that pattern. So you guys can see that. I will shut that off. Now what I might do because, let me get some lights back on in here. Okay, now what I might do because I would like to have some forward facing light too. I really don't use um, strobes or warning lights as much as a lot of guys do when they plow snow. Um, when I used to do a lot of parking lots I did, but now I just do, um, this year I cut it way back. So I have 41 residentials and one small parking lot, it's a small apartment complex. Pretty much straight shots in if you guys go back and watch my videos. Um, for those of you that haven't seen them, you'll see the one small apartment complex video that, uh, you'll, you'll see the apartment complex that I do. That, if you want to look for one, just look through my videos at the beginning of this year, 2021, and uh, I think February or so, I put up a video that said, uh, out of room for snow, and I had to have a tractor come in and move snow, but you'll see the truck in that video, and there's a couple other ones. Um, but that's pretty much one of the main ones that shows the parking lot I do. It's real small, straightforward pushes in. Uh, so I really don't use strobes that much. I just really don't have a need for them. Um, when I'm backing in and out of driveways, you know, I pay attention. I don't back out in front of people like a lot of guys do. Especially in this area. It seems like a lot of guys back out in front of everybody. But that light bar is this right here. This is the light bar. comes with the brackets and you put the suction cups on it. Um, but... I, so I have another one because when I ordered them, I ordered it in a two-pack. It was a lot cheaper that way. Um, I can't remember where I got them. Amazon or eBay. I want to say probably Amazon. Um, and I want to say it was like 30 bucks for one of them or $40 for two of them if you buy the two-pack or something. So I just bought two of them. Um, so originally what I was thinking was I was going to put them out here on the back rack. They will fit right in between there. Um, I was going to put one down here or up here facing backwards and then put the other one up top facing forward. I do have a switch if I decide to do that. I went and bought this switch from my dealer. It's a three pole. Um, each one's separate. It comes with everything you need to wire it in and it's just a chrome plate. And you can screw it to a dash somewhere or screw it to wherever you want to. Um, and that is, that's a buyer's as well. Triple switch panel. And that's all it is. I don't even remember what, how much it was. 30 bucks, I think. 40 bucks. Probably not even that much. But anyway, um, so that is the plan. I might eventually do that. And then if I do, because those plug in the cigarette lighter plugs, um, if I do that at that point, I'll just cut the plug off. And I will uh, 
wire them all in that switch. I also have the the toggle switches to turn them on and off. Uh, if you guys ever do that, and you want to know, by the way, um, on the end of these plugs, like this is what the plug looks like that goes in the cigarette lighter, okay? That powers it on, and then this is just a momentary, and every time you hit it, it switches patterns. If you want a specific pattern, and you're going to hardwire this, you're going to cut this plug off, what you do is you plug it into a cigarette lighter plug, Okay, turn it on and go through your patterns until you get to the one you want. Once you get to the one you want, shut the power off, unplug it, cut it. That way when you hardwire it, it'll be stuck on that pattern. Otherwise, once you hardwire it, you're going to get whatever pattern it gives you. But that's how you can make sure that it'll be stuck on that pattern for when you hardwire it. So like I said, nothing big, nothing interesting today. Um, I was referred to these lights and was told about these lights by Will Rice from uh, Will's Lawn Service. He has the same exact blade and he put these lights on his plow, I believe last year or the year before, um, and he loves them. He says it's worth the cost. They are not cheap. They're about 750 bucks to buy these lights. That's what they are at the dealer. Um, I did find them on eBay for, they were $576 in free shipping. So. Um, you can get them on eBay or like I said at my dealer they're like 750 bucks you can go either way um, but it's pretty expensive to upgrade to those LED lights um, which is why I put the LED bulbs in there last year it was only like 60 bucks I think for the two bulbs uh, which I still have somewhere around here but anyway um, so it's, it's an expensive upgrade but according to Will it is worth every penny um, and you'll never regret doing it so I knew I had to do something before starting the season off. I couldn't risk driving around and one light keep going out of me, especially in a bad snowstorm. So I had to do it, um, which is why I did it. But uh, so that's on there now and we will find out how they are. I'm gonna drive around with this for a couple days because I've only moved the plow around here in the shop for a day or two. I haven't really done anything with it. And now that we've been starting to get snow, nothing plowable. Um, I want to drive around with it for a few days, operate the plow back and forth, just make sure everything is good to go on it before we, uh, before we get a plowable snowstorm and I want to make sure these headlights are dialed in where I want them. I'll know if I'm driving around at night and everybody keeps flashing their high beams at me. I'll know that they're, uh, they're not right. People are going to anyway just because they're LEDs and you're always going to get people doing that. They always think your high beams are on, but that's just what LEDs are. Um, but the amount of people flashing me will let me know if it's, uh, if they're definitely not lined up so that's pretty much that and uh, I looked all over on YouTube and could not find anybody showing how to wire these in and I wasn't sure if they were direct wire or not or if I'd uh, cut the wire harness or whatever I need to do so I wanted to put this up so people would know if they were gonna buy these lights um, they would know ahead of time how to put them on and uh, and what's involved in doing it and those two nuts on the bottom let me just look on my impact because I threw the impact in the truck so I'd have it so that I could adjust if I needed to. They're 19 mil. So the two nuts that are on the bottom on each, on each one are 19 mil. Um, so that's all you need to change those out. And like I said, they're super easy. Drop the nuts off the bottom, unplug the plug, and they pull right off. And then reverse order, obviously, to put the new ones back on. But that's all there is to it. And... Uh, We'll catch you guys in the next one. There's a lot of stuff coming up, a lot of videos coming up, a lot of repairs coming up to different pieces of equipment. So I will film all that. And uh, right now it's just shop days because I can't do anything outside. Talk to you guys soon.